So our little adventure for today is going to be making our own precision resistor. Um, basically we're not making the resistor from scratch, we're taking these older resistors here and we're modifying them to create a um, more precise value that's of use to us. Um, the first one that we're going to do is the more common style that you see these days, which is these, these are 2700 ohm resistors here and these are carbon film style. That's typically what you see. And this is how they're built, how they're made in, internally. They have a um, carbon film is printed on a, a ceramic core. And you'll see it, it goes around the core here. And then this adds up all the resistance. And that's, in this particular case, 2700 ohms from end to end here. These can be adjusted slightly by um, just taking and grinding away some of the material with a triangle file. Now you have to be really careful with these ones. The other style here, the carbon uh, composition ones, they're much easier to, to do. They take more work to do this, but uh, they're easier to not go past where you want to go by removing uh, material. These, these carbon film ones, you'll be going through the surface of them, the epo epoxy or the uh, ser um, enamel on the outside of these, and then you'll get down to this um, carbon film right here and you've got to be very ginger, very careful with it, do it very gingerly. And I'll show you how it's done. So we're going to take our 2700 ohm resistor here, we're going to clip it into our test leads here and we'll see what it actually says it is right now. That's pretty close to 2700 but what we're looking for is 2850 and here's the, here's what it looks like what we're shooting for. Uh, we have the 2700s and we're going for 2850. If we want to keep it within 1%, this is our values that we want to shoot for. I've got these uh, carbon composition ones over here. They're 4.7K, the 4700 ohms. We're going to uh, put them up to 5000 ohms even and we're considered within 1% plus or minus 50 ohms of 5000. That would be 1%. These guys are 10% right now. You don't see those too often anymore, if at all. Uh, silver. 10%. So let's give it a go with this one. And you have to be really careful with these. I mean, it happens, it can happen pretty fast. So we're going for 2850. And we're going to watch our, going to watch our meter there. So we got 2862, uh, we're looking again, we're looking for top end is 2878, so we are well within our, our numbers here. So that's, that's basically done right there. And we can take a little bit of nail polish and get it ready. And we can throw a touch of polish on that and let this thing dry, which dries pretty quickly. And don't put too much on because you don't need it. You don't need that much. And that will seal that up. And now for one of the carbon composition style. Uh, the carbon composition is basically bulk resistance inside of here. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into there with the, um, with the file. And we're going to take and cut a notch out of it like so. Basically is what's going to happen. And uh, that, re that in increase in resistance in this area right here will bring us up to what we want to be. Uh, we're at 4700 ohms approximately right now. We're shooting for 5000. These are much more forgiving. Uh, when you start approaching the, uh, the value that you want, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to go past it because it still takes a fair bit of material to come out of there. So there's our 4700 ohms and I'm going to start flying at it here. And we'll grind this guy up to 5000 ohms and probably end up fairly close. One thing to remember as you're getting fairly close is that your file is conductive and as you put that in there it's conducting across it and actually making the resistance go lower. So we're zooming in here to 5000 ohms so got to be careful and got to remember that. And I'm going to call that close enough. 4.99k and we're going to take and put a bit of nail polish on this and we'll call it good. Just a little blob. So while the other one here is drying, this is one I did yesterday. 
uh, just to see if anything's changed. It, it, this is what it was yesterday, 5.02K, and uh, the nail polish has dried, has not, that's not changed, and this is all sealed up and all good to go. So why would you do this? Uh, first of all, you get it now. When you want a precision resistor or you need a couple of them for some particular circuit or a lot of them for, a, say, an, an R2R ladder or something like that for your digital to analog converter, you can make them right now. Um, you can do this, of course, with uh, trimmer trimmers and uh, pots and things like that. And you can start stacking resistors in series and in parallel to try and get close to what you are. But uh, especially with these carbon resistors, it doesn't take very long to do this. Probably by the time you've gone and trimmed off uh, um, some other resistor or you've uh, uh, figured out which number of resistors you've got to add together to get the appropriate value, it's probably faster just to do this. And it's cheap. It's just the cost of a resistor. Uh, of course, not counting your time. Uh, obviously, pick the next lower value of resistor from the standard values that you may have in your in your bins, and then because you're removing material, it's you know res resistance is gonna go up. Try and get the same batch if you can of the kind of uh, resistor that you're doing, and don't mix types. Don't mix a carbon composition with a, a carbon film or any other kind like that. Keep them all the same. And that way they'll move with the temperature the way you would, they would move uh, with each other. Uh, no wire wound, obviously, because the wires, if you grind it with this, um, with this file, you're going to cut through the wire and then put sealant of some sort across them. The nail polish is just cheap and easy and it, uh, one of these will last you for a decade. <clears throat> Real precision resistors have a lot more features than these guys do. Uh, doing this with carbon composition resistors is, is fine as long as you understand the shortcomings of carbon composition resistors. The carbon films, metal films and all that have a lot more uh, good things going for them. But these are certainly easy to do and um, if you're just making up a test circuit or something, um, uh, this is a great way to go and again get the get a real one later th throw these in there for now and get your circuit proved out before you go and spend money on a, um, a precision resistor precision resistors don't necessarily have to be very expensive they can be as cheap as well depending on your tolerance you can get a 0.1 ohm resistor for a chip resistor uh, for you know, 25 cents or something so um, anyways, and also be aware of your multimeter or your ohm meter resistance precision. If you're really going for, like in this, my case, the uh, the 5K, this this is not the this doesn't have a lot of zeros in the percentage of tolerance. This I think is half a percent or so for the old 7700s on um, on resistance measurements. So you would ideally you would like to have a multimeter or an ohm meter that's 10 times the precision that you are shooting for for your your tolerances. And one more thing to mention here, we've removed a lot of material from this resistor. This was a half watt resistor, well they're both half watt resistors, but we've moved a, removed a lot of material from here. So you're going to have to derate these things by a fair bit, maybe a quarter watt in this one, but that's not really usually what you might use this for. You would be using it for like voltage dividers and that sort of things. Uh, not really meant for, uh, you know, putting a lot of wattage relatively through one of these. If you decide to use one of these rotary tools to uh, trim your resistors, and uh, be nice and quick I'm sure, uh, but just beware of the dust and wear eye protection. Just be careful and you'd probably want that little cutoff disc that goes on the end of here instead of the sanding pad. This would raise a lot of dust and the little cutting uh, disc would probably make some notches in here nice and nice and easily and um, it's also probably non-conducting I'm sure and you could just keep going at it while you're watching your meter to sneak up on that resistance value that you want.